Uh, says 17 as well. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 17. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. All right, so in order to get the understanding, start at verse... 12. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear. Uh, Let's read this again from the top. Take your time, please. Verse 13. Come on. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me, by which is good, that sin by the commandments might become exceeding sinful. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. <coughs> All right, so the Bible says the law is spiritual, but Paul says at times he is what? He's carnal. What does carnal mean, brothers? Uh, you say worldly, what else? Fleshly. Fleshly is going into what? Huh? Sinful, right. So Paul is literally telling us his battle right here in Romans, the seventh chapter. Okay? Um, give me um, 2 Corinthians 12 real quick. So we're going over Paul's struggle, all right? And that's why you have to read the scriptures to build your faith. Because Paul's telling you, hey, he struggled too, okay? All right, 2 Corinthians 12 and 6. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 6. Come on. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. What is he saying right there? What is Paul saying when he says, lest any man think of him above what he needs to think of him? What is he saying? Hands, please. Simon. All right, so um, uh, Paul uh, was humbling himself uh, even though he, you know, he, he knew that he walked after Christ and uh, everybody else knew that he that Christ was dealing with him on the next level. You know that he could have been exalted. Um, you know, pretty much as you know somebody. Say that great. again. All right. So can you read it? Can you read it again from just the top? This is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter twelve and verse six. For though I would desire to glory, but shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. So he's saying um, his, his fleshly side would, um, would want him to glory uh, after himself, knowing how great of a man he is, um, you know, with Christ dealing, dealing with him on a higher level like that. And um, he said... Um, you know, he don't want nobody to exhort him higher than what he... All right, that's it. That's, that's good. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. So Paul's telling you, hey, I'm a man just like y'all. I go through things just like y'all. You got some, Ricardo? Did Paul have a wife? No, Paul did not have a wife. Paul was a eunuch for Christ's sake. No. So he dealt with... What do you think he dealt with? He dealt with lust, evil concupiscence, okay? All right, let's read on. Let's get through this. Verse 7. Turn his mic up, please. I can barely hear this guy. And lest I should be exalted above measures through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. A what? The, a thorn in the flesh. All right, thorn in the flesh. What's that, brothers? Didn't we go over this recently? When do we go over this? Okay. Uh, you say it. It's a uh, lust or a sin in his flesh. Right. It's like a thorn does what to you? If you get pricked with a thorn, what does it do? 
It hurts. It hurts. It's like a nagging. Yes, that's that thing. Like, dang, man, I want to get this out or get this pain to stop. It's a nagging or something annoying. And that's what a lot of our hangups are. It's a thorn in our flesh. Meaning what? What does it do? Read on. Less a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. To buffet you is what? To keep you in check. I realizing that you ain't perfect. Even though when it came to Paul, his understanding was like that. But that was his thorn in the flesh to what? Keep him humble. All right, read on. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Right, because he's not Christ. He's not Christ, all right? All right, uh, Romans 7. Let's go back. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 2. No, 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 14. 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Read on. For that which I do, I allow not. Uh huh. For what I would that I do. All right, all right, I'm going to read it. All right, I'm going to read it. All right, it says, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. So, he's saying, For that which I do, I allow not. So, when he does become carnal, he ain't okay with it. That's what he's saying right there. When he, when he gets weak or fleshly, he's not all right with it. But then it says, for what I would, that do I not. Meaning what? The laws of God, the commandments of God, the things that he should be doing, when he knows he should do it, he finds himself not doing it. Then he says, but what I hate, that I do. That do I, excuse me. What I hate is what? Sinning. He doesn't want to be sinful, but he finds himself doing the things that he hates, Okay. Verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. So the only thing that can get us to do the right thing is what, brothers? The laws of God. All right. Now, verse 17. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So it means what? At a point it takes over. First Kings 21 and 20. Watch this. It's an example. 1 Kings 21 and 20. So a lot of brothers will read Romans 7 and be like, oh, hey, Paul was sinning, so I'm good. No, you're not. No, you are not, brothers and sisters. Paul is literally showing us Galatians 5, 16 on down. The flesh versus the spirit. That's what he's finding right now. Through the scriptures, we have the solution how to conquer our sins or our thorns. All right, so he's not giving you an excuse to sin. He's not. All right, read this. Read this one. First Kings chapter 21 and verse 20. Come on. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring... Oh, oh. read that part again. It says, and he answered me. Read that. And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Right. <clears throat> a lot of us are guilty of this to the point where now you are subject to sin. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 16. A lot of y'all allow your sins just to take over and no longer are you in control. Let's see who's honest. Who has that ever happened to? So the question is, have you ever got so low to the point where sin took over? Have, who, let's see if you are honest. Sisters, are you honest with yourselves? Some of you ain't. Some of you don't want to acknowledge. But it's going to be all right. That's an example right here in 1 Kings 21 and 20. But let's see what the Bible commands us to do. Verse 76. This is the book of 2 Edris. Chapter 16 and verse 76. Read that. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sin weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. You see that? It says don't let your iniquities lift up themselves. Meaning what? Don't allow yourself to get to that point where now, you know what? You're subject to sin. Now you're living According to those evil thoughts, rather than doing what? Fighting it or combating them with the word of God. You understand that? All right. Uh, Sirach 7 real quick. I'm going to hit this one too. Sirach 7 and 9. 
This is the book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 9. Start at 8. Verse 8. Watch this. Bind not one sin upon, a, upon another. You see that? It says, bind not one sin upon another. So let's say, <coughs> give me Proverbs 24 and 16 real quick. Brothers and sisters, there's going to come times in the truth where you do fall or make mistakes. How do we know? We're going to read it right now. Okay, we're going to read this, and we're going to come back to Sirach. Watch this. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. Watch that. For a just man falleth seven times. So just means what? Those who keep God's commandments. So it says a just man falleth what? Seven times. Come on. And riseth up again. Uh, adds another sin onto it. And riseth up again. And riseth up again, meaning what? He applied Baruch 4 and 28. Who knows what that says? Simon. Uh, it, said, um, uh, it says, as it were in your mind to go astray from the, the Lord, uh, seeking ten, ten times more. Ten times more. Y'all see that? If you happen to fall, it says to seek him ten times more. All right, read this one again, and we're going to go back to Sirach 7. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. Come on. For a just man falleth seven times, uh -huh. and riseth up again. Read. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Uh, the wicked shall fall into mischief. They just added a sin upon a what? Right, Sirach 7 and 8. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 8. Come on. Bind not one sin upon another. Uh-huh. For, for in one thou shalt not be unpunished. Meaning what? That's why I told you. Don't, don't read Romans 7 as an excuse to sin. Because a lot of brothers, I'm telling you, a lot of brothers, how am I telling you? Because when I was young, the truth, I was like, oh, well, shoot, it's all right. It's all right if I, it's not all right. It's not all right. You're going to be judged for it. Read it all the way through again. This is the book of Sirach. Chapter 7 and verse 8. Come on. By not one sin upon another. Uh -huh. For in one thou shalt not be unpunished. Read. Say not, God will look upon the multitude of uh, my oblations. What, if, what are oblations? Sacrifices. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Meaning what? Does God want our oblations? Sacrifice. What does he want? Exactly, exactly. Read verse 9 again. Verse 9. Say not, God will look upon the multitude of my oblations. And when I offer to the most high God, he will accept it. That's why Christ had to come. Because that's how we roll. We said we don't we ain't worrying about actually keeping the law. We just gonna offer up sacrifices to replace our sins, and we're gonna be good. No, no longer is that accepted. Because the law of sacrifice is now what? Done away with. So now we have to make our calling and election what? Sure. sure. By sinning and saying, if I ask for forgiveness, I'm good, is that making any calling and election sure? sure. Now nah, we got to fight every day. And only we know if we're truly fighting. You get what I'm saying? Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, go back to Romans 7. Uh, 7 and um, 17. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 17. Uh-huh. But as God have dis distributed to Wait, 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 wait. Romans 7 and 17. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 17. Come on. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Read verse 22. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The inward man is the man that knows to do right. What's right according to the Bible? Keeping the law. Keeping the law. Now they will see the treatment of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites.
to serve God And why would I say that I'm a Jew with sound art? For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's our man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.